Right. Here we go. I sing my You ready? I'm grateful for it. Well, good evening. Thank you so much for worshiping with us this Saturday night. Um, as we're beginning every Saturday or every worship service, we're starting with a, a moment of quiet meditation and prayer. And so tonight I wanted to share with you from Ephesians. It's chapter 5, it's verse 15, and it's not in your bulletin. And so um, what I wanted to just pause and just say this to you, and then I'm going to read this piece of scripture to you, and then I want you to, like, we're just going to meditate and talk about it. And what I want to say to you was, I, I listened to this uh, podcast, and the person said, he was for the last time. Ephesians 5.15 reads this way. Be careful then how you live. Not as unwise people, but as wise. Making the most of the time because the days are evil. Now that last word bothered me all this week. Evil. Um, because I'm just trying to like wrap my head around it. The days are evil, and I, I was like, the days are mean, the days are difficult, the days, like, but, they, 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 you know, I, I kept on kind of, like, struggling with this, but I started to think about this podcast and about this idea of, there's this moment when it's the last time, and the, the podcaster described how he didn't know that it was the last time he was going to ski. Um, a physical situation occurred and he never again put on his skis and went skiing and you know he he's talked about looking back and thinking boy I would have done some different things if I'd have known it was the last time and it was a joyous thing it was something that he really was fun and taking off the skis and, and, and having this thing with his family and it was the last time and he started thinking about you know tucking his kids into bed, changing a diaper, seeing a loved one. I kept on going back to this last time. And I think the evil that, that Paul is talking about is the sense that we just, we overlook the importance of the moment. We overlook like this is this one chance, like Karen says, I love you. And you know, I'm not saying I want it to be the last time, but I just, I want to, you just cherish it because I should. We should cherish it every single time we have a chance. You know, every single time we see each other, cherish it. And so tonight, I just want to ask you as you pause and meditate about the words of Ephesians to be aware of the importance of time. Because the days, they slip away as if they are evil. And all we have is this moment now together. So take a moment to meditate, to be careful then how you live, not as unwise people, but as wise, making the most of the time. Turn your, your attention to the bullets as the call to worship is printed inside. Just remain seated, and if you wouldn't mind, just for call and response. We are children of God. As brilliant as a shining star. As wondrous as an ocean wave. As special as each fragrant rose. As unique as each falling leaf. We are God's children. United in praise, humbled in awe, and prompted to sing. Amen. Now I invite you, there's an insert for today's first song, Take My Life and Let It Be. Uh, there are um, three um, verses that, <laughs> I knew that was the word I wanted. 
This is a test, John. I know this is yeah. a test in us. <laughs> I think I might have taken too much blood today. <laughs> that could be a problem. That could be it. I think that might be the issue. I took the I took the bandage off too early, and it just it, and, uh, it, and it made me pay for it. All right, here we go. so much to Sharon for recording all this great stuff for us. I invite you to turn your attention at this time to your bulletins again for a moment of silent confession, an opportunity to pray silently, confessing our faults and sins before God, understanding an awareness that we have been sinned against as well. The Holy One forgives and bestows favor on each of us, even and especially when we are lowly in spirit. We are blessed from generation to generation by the Mighty One, whose strength and mercy are forever. Amen. Amen. Today's scripture reading, uh, the first one is the responsive reading. It's Psalm 121, and it is uh, all on the back side of uh, Take My Life and Let It Be. And so Psalm 121 is uh, often uh, considered like a traveling uh, psalm, if you will. But it is also an opportunity for us to be mindfulness. It's used in some songs about uh, singing God's praise in the midst of storm. And as we travel throughout our lives, as we journey, we find real storms. We face thunder and lightning and rain. We face muddy roads, we face ruts that do not seem to let us go, and then we call out to God and praise in the midst of the storm. God, please protect us. When we hurt, when we suffer, when we feel broken and stopped, we call out to God and call out. Psalm 121. I lifted my eyes to the hills, for whence does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. The Lord will not let your foot be moved. The Lord who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, the one who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade and your right hand. 
The sun shall not smite you by day, nor the, the moon by, by night. night. The Lord will keep you from all evil and will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. Amen. Uh, the next scripture reading comes from the uh, Hebrew scripture, uh, often referred to as the Old Testament. It's the book of Joshua, and we, we know that Joshua uh, picks up for Moses um, and brings the, 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 uh, the Israelites into the promised land. Now, therefore, revere the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that your ancestors served beyond the river and in Egypt, and serve the Lord. Now, if you are unwilling to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods of your ancestors served in the region beyond the river, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Would you please rise as you're able and join me in uh, glory be to the Father. We'll just say it since I don't have the music and I, my acapella is probably not that good. <laughs> All oh, right. not like us. Here we go. <laughs> glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. If you could, please remain standing as you're able as I read to you today's gospel reading. The gospel reading comes from the Gospel of St. Matthew. It's chapter 19, is verses 13 through 15. Then little children were being brought to him in order that he might lay his hands on them and pray. The disciples spoke sternly to those who brought them. But Jesus said, let the little children come to me. Do not stop them. For it is to such as these that the kingdom of heaven belongs. And he laid his hands on them and went on his way. A word from God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Amen. Amen. Would you please be seated? Let us take a moment to pray. May the words of our lips and the meditations of our hearts be always acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. It's not a coincidence that the words of Joshua and the Gospel of St. Matthew come to us on the same evening. It's Joshua who says to the Israelites and those who they have captured and who have kind of like absorbed from the Canaanite to be in the promised land, that they've come to a crossroads. He says, how will you live your life? Will you live your life with small gods, thinking small ways and following small directions? Or will you come to the Lord? This is the same Joshua who, surrounded by other spies as they went into the promised land, stood up to them when they all said, Oh, the people of Cana are giants. The fruit, the grapes, they're bigger than your head. The bananas, the size of two bodies. Everybody's giant. They must be nine and ten feet tall. Their swords humongous. We cannot overtake them. But it was Joshua. Joshua says, absolutely not. Don't tell me, don't say to God, you've got big problems. No, Joshua says, tell your problems. I've got a big God. And so that is the story that he says, this is the time for something new, for something to be changed, to step out on this limb and live your life. And he ends with simply, for me and my home, we will follow the Lord. The same holds true today in the gospel. It is the culture of that time and place the children were nothing but a nuisance. They were a draw on families' economies. They were a draw on everything, their, their food, uh, the work. They kept people from being able to do more work and be more, um, I don't know, productive, if you will, in society. And I wonder about how far we have moved. 
this incredible desire to be ultimately productive, to have more, to be more, to collect more stuff, to be absent of the consciousness of the present. We forget that every moment could be the last time. And so Jesus challenges both then and absolutely now. This go, 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 never off economy to a pause and awareness and a sense of value for children. Now we see that maybe in its literal basis. But Jesus, Jesus is the Christ. Jesus is God. Jesus says to us without any correction, come to me, be near me, have my blessing, know that you are eternally loved. He's aware that that comes with all kinds of other pressures, that the culture says that you got to go, go, go on Sundays and every other day of the week. He recognizes the fact that if you don't have the newest thing, the best thing, you don't have all these things, that you are out of sync and out of step and out of touch with the culture. And he doesn't demand it. No. He says, come to me, and I give you this love. I give you this care. I give you this deep and meaningful respect. Far too often, we see the world as a pyramid, that those at the top have all the power and authority. And the further you are from the top, the less value you have, the less authority, the less voice you have. And Jesus says no. Jesus demonstrates that this Trinity experience, this Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is a circular, not triangular, not pyramid, not a top, a side, and a side, but flat pushes back on anything otherwise. Jesus says he doesn't care how rich you are. He doesn't care if you're a centurion. He doesn't care where you came from. He doesn't care who your parents are or if you have no parents at all and you're an absolute orphan. You stand with equality with him. This is kind of hard for us to get used to. There's no doubt about it. Because we're used to a world of domination. We're used to a world of hierarchy. We're used to a world that they pass it down, pass it down, and it finally gets to us. Jesus says no. He says that we are invited to no longer live a top-down life, but a life of equality, a life of justice, a life of meaningful right now so that we may cherish one another, hold each other sacred, pause and become incredibly aware of our value, of our purpose, and our meaning in life. And that meaning just comes in relationship. Jesus says to love one another, not some more than others, not lesser or greater, not with any kind of caveat or any kind of like, well, you're not like me. I don't agree with you. You annoy me. Maybe you smell funny. Jesus says to love one another. And so tonight, I just invite you into that invitation. I invite you to hold the fact that you are equal with all humanity the greatest and most powerful rock stars, movie stars, actors, singers, whatever. They are equal to you in God's love. And you are cherished. To be mindful of that. And as you pray, this day and always, know your worth, know your value, and be always thoughtful and mindful and heartfelt Come to Christ. You are invited. You are blessed. And you are welcome.
I forgot my pen again. <laughs> uh, celebrations and concerns. Do we have any uh, celebrations or concerns? I could like run around. Hold on. I know it's right here. How's Ginger doing? I haven't heard, I saw him thinking everything's status quo so far. Okay. We'll keep praying for him. Yes, please. Yes. Okay. This is valve replacement? Huh? Is it valve? valve, yeah. yeah. And she's my sister-in-law. I think you listed her in the brochure as my great uncle or something. I'm sorry. <laughs> I sometimes I can't read my own handwriting. It's so Libby's, good. I'm just like typing stuff and Libby's got to be like, what? <laughs> okay, anyone else? Um, I'd like us to pray for a couple of friends who had surgery recently. Marlene Neal. John Young. And a friend who is having surgery this coming week. Clara Wilson. Um, I don't know if anyone heard, um, Joe and Diane had twin grandsons. Oh, how uh, wonderful. Yeah, um, I want to say Finn and Liam. Oh. So that's something that we want to, I think, oh. celebrate. They seem to be on the mend as well. Good. So Good. we probably want to continue to pray for them. I saw on Facebook that Rich Cron is doing better. Yeah. Better also. So we should definitely uh, celebrate his um, continued progress. And um, personally, uh, so my sister-in-law's brother was killed in a tragic car accident um, last Sunday morning. It was a, a head-on collision, so uh, we could hold. Uh, uh, Gianno. Gianno? Am I saying that right? I think I'm saying that right. Gianno. All right, let's just take a moment to um, pause. Living God, take this moment to pray, to be conscious and aware that you always surround us. We pray this evening with celebrations and heartfelt concerns. We lift up our sister Karen in great gratitude and great love as a member of our community who cares for us in so many ways. We hold up Joe and Diane and the birth of their twin uh, grandsons, Finn and Liam. We hold up the continued um, development and help uh, for Rich Cron as he recovers. We ask uh, for strength and courage for those who are in um, difficult spaces right now. We hold up um, Sandy's sister-in-law, Ginger. We hold up Marlene Neal and John Young as they recover from their surgery. We ask for blessings upon Clara and those doctors and medical professionals who will care for her for her surgery and we, we hold up Gianna and his family as they uh, deal with this incredible grief in their lives. Loving God, you are the one that we turn to, we pray to, and we ask for your will to be done. We ask for comfort, we ask for strength, we ask for endurance, we ask for an awareness of this moment with one another. 
When we pray, we join one another in the unending hymn of your love. We praise you in the storm, as Psalm 121 calls us to. We thank you for always calling us to you for blessings. We join now our minds, our hearts, and our voices as we pray the Lord's Prayer together, saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Um, each time we gather together, we are grateful to celebrate and to pray for the great generosity of this community to allow us to keep on going for local and global mission and ministry. And so I invite us to just take a moment for an offering prayer saying together, Gracious God, as we celebrate the power of the resurrection this day, we ask that you would receive these offerings and gifts that we give joyfully and generously. By the power of your spirit, multiply them and use them to bring peace, justice, hope, and the good news of Jesus Christ to all the world. Amen. At this time, I'd like to uh, turn your attention to um, the Great Thanksgiving and Holy Communion. It's also printed in your bulletin. Well, let us join our, uh, our ourselves in this moment of Holy uh, Communion. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, O Lord our God, creator of the universe, our holy and living parent. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we join their unending hymn saying together, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and blessed are you, Lord Jesus Christ, who became flesh and dwelled among us on earth. On the night in which you gave yourself up for us, you took bread, gave thanks, broke the bread, gave it to your disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this as often as you come together remembrance of me. When the supper was over, you took the cup. You gave thanks. You gave it to your disciples and said, take, drink. This is my blood, the blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you come together in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance and celebration, we now offer ourselves as a holy and living sacrifice in union with our offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith, saying together, Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. O Holy Spirit, pour out upon us and upon these gifts of bread and cup. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. All honor and glory be, you, be to you, most holy Trinity, now and forever, as we say together, Amen, Amen, Amen. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. So we're still doing the individualized uh, cups, so I'll just come around.
of this tonight knowing full well that this is the entirety of Christ so that we are filled with and live with and walk with the entirety of Christ now and forever. Let us pray. Loving God, we bow our heads this evening in prayer. A benediction, a good word to go forth into the world. We are aware of our individual struggles. We hand them to you, fully aware that you walk beside us. You shelter us in the storm. You call us beside you to be blessed and to be loved. <laughs> To be restored and renewed. Let us do that in every moment of our lives. And remember that God loves you, and so do I. Go in peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.